Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger, and in this lecture, we will learn about the key traits of a new group of diapsid reptiles that originated in the late Permian and early Triassic, the Archosauromorpha. During the Permian, most diapsids were small, lizard-like creatures, such as Yunginia, which belonged to the basal family Yunginiaformes. A small lizard-like animals, Yunginia lay hard-shelled eggs and were independent from water sources, unlike the Temnospondyl amphibians. As the climate became more extreme, hot, and dry, these small lizard-like diapsids became successful in the barren world of the End Permian. Having a small lizard-like body was a big bonus during a time of hot and dry climates and a nasty atmosphere. These little guys were survivors. It was during this very inhospitable landscape at the Permian-Triassic boundary that these small lizard-like diapsids diversified into two unique lineages as their populations expanded geographically across the world. The first group are the Lepidiosauromorpha, and during the later Triassic, they would evolve into turtles, strange marine reptiles like ichthyosaurs and plesiosaurs, as well as modern snakes and lizards. The second group are the Archosauromorpha, which would evolve and diversify during the later Triassic into crocodilians, uh, pterosaurs, dinosaurs, and birds. This little jaw is from the late Permian of England, and it belongs to the earliest Archosauromorpha, Protorosaurus. This iguanid-sized reptile is known from fossilized skeletons across Europe, but it is within the jaw that we see the first unique trait of the Archosauromorpha. The teeth are positioned into semi-sockets in the denary bone, a semi-thecodont condition. The term thecodont is for animals that have their teeth arranged in sockets in the denary, maxillary, and premaxillary bones. Early diapsids had an acrodont condition in which the teeth are fused onto the outer surface of the bone, or the pleurodont condition, in which the teeth are fused onto the side of the denary and maxillary bones. These other conditions are found in the Lepidiosauromorpha, uh, including in modern lizards. Early Archosauromorpha are historically called the thecodonts because they all exhibit teeth embedded in sockets. Although this condition is also found in the descendants, including crocodilians, dinosaurs, and toothed birds. With the mass extinction at the end of the Permian period, the early Triassic saw the slow arise of these small lizard-like creatures into new niches left open by the extinction of so many synapsids or mammal-like reptiles. One of the early Archosauromorpha is Euparcaria, which is known from South Africa. Euparcaria exhibits two additional features of the Archosauromorpha. Within the skull, we see a new opening anterior or in front of the orbit between the lacrimal and maxillary bones. This opening is called the antorbital fenestra, a feature unique to the Archosauromorpha. We can also see an additional opening in the lower jaw at the junction of the denary, superangular, and angular. The opening is called the mandibular fenestra. Both of these openings can be found in later crocodilians, pterosaurs, dinosaurs, and birds, as well as a diverse group of Archosauromorphans. 
Another key trait we see in euparcaria is found in the two ankle bones, the calcaneum and the astragalus. In basal diapsids and in the lipidiosauromorpha, the two bones sit side by side, forming a broad bone that's often fused together in modern lizards. With the principal joint uh, moving the foot between the fused calcaneum astragalus bone and the metatarsal bones. In euparcaria, the calcaneum and astragalus form a joint between each other. This twisting joint allows the foot to rotate outward, which can help push the animal forward in running, a sidekick motion to the hind leg. Some researchers have suggested that this joint was so well developed in euparcaria that it was able to support a semi-bipedal running pattern. And some reconstructions of euparcaria have it as a bipedal animal. It was about the size of a small iguanid lizard. Euparcaria also had a well-developed impedance matching middle ear with the stapes bone supporting a tympanic membrane and housed in an air-filled middle ear chamber. The femur exhibits a protuberance called the fourth trochanter, which supported a large caudal femoris longus muscle, which ran between the femur and the caudal vertebrae or tail, which when tensed would retract the upper thigh. This fourth trochanter in the femur is a feature found in later dinosaurs, which helps support running and a more upright locomotive style. A final new trait we see in the Archosauromorpha has to do with pneumaticity in the vertebrae and other bones. Small pockets or openings along the centrums, a feature that gives us a glimpse at how these early Archosauromorpha breathe differently than most terrestrial tetrapods. In the next video, we will explore this pneumaticity across archosauromorphs and its importance in the development of a new style of respiration that's found in birds, dinosaurs, and many primitive archosauromorphians. For now, be sure to review the key features of basal archosauromorphs and be able to identify them on a skeleton and skull. The thecodont teeth, the anorbital fenestra, the mandibular fenestra, the fourth trochanter, and pneumaticity in the vertebrae. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more uh, about Utah State University's geology program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website at benjamin slash burger.org. Links are found in the description below.